As of this morning, we've had 13 positive cases, seven players, six staff. We will continue to te test each day as we self-isolate here in Milwaukee. We hope to be cleared to travel by Wednesday. As of this morning, we have five individuals that have no, no symptoms, asymptomatic. Seven have shown headaches, cough, sniffles, and low-grade fevers. We are currently in touch with all of them, with our medical staff, not only here in Milwaukee, but in St. Louis as well. So going forward, we plan to remain in Milwaukee until we are cleared to travel, but we're hopeful that will be Wednesday morning. The, the hope would be to travel back to St. Louis Wednesday morning, work out Wednesday afternoon, allow players to, to get their, their feet moving again, their bodies moving again, and, and then on Thursday have, have a more robust workout and then play Friday against the Cubs. So that's kind of where we are. Um, you know, it's, it, we are where we are. Um, and, and, you know, we're all hopeful that, that we can start taking step forward. I mean, we all hear about, you know, flattening the curve and what that means in, in the, in our country, in our states, in our cities, but you know, looking at it from a baseball team standpoint, it's a microcosm. And you know, I will say, based on last night's testing, we, we are encouraged that we're getting closer to that point. We are not there yet, but we are getting closer. And um, that's why we will remain in self-isolation. So at this point, be happy to take a few questions. Mo, you mentioned five players are asymptomatic and seven had mild symptoms. You had 13 positive tests. What can you put, comment on the status of the 13th person? I did not. Um, I did not uh, specify players or staff. But um, so if I said five individuals are have no symptoms, then that means uh, eight do. Okay. I, you, you, okay. Thank you. Well, why are they? Um, why are there no, why are you guys not releasing any names? Is that, is each individual player deciding that he wants to remain private or is that a team? Um, no, that, that, that's a player decision, individual decision. I shouldn't even say player because there are staff involved. So they all have told you that they want to remain private. Is that fair to say? It's exactly what you should say. Okay. Hey Mo, did the, uh, these symptoms, did they start to manifest set yesterday? And is that why there was additional concern? No, we were just awaiting testing. Do you have, do you have any thoughts on why this spreads so far? Um, I understand that it's a virus and it, it can move exponentially. Um, you guys seem to move swiftly to, put a, to try to stem the flow of it, but this seems a little bit more of an eruption. You know, not overly surprised after we did the tracing. Um, the, 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 you know, original people that had it and, and the contacts that were made, it's, it's, it's all pretty logical, actually. And, um, you know, not being a virus spread expert in any, way, any means, uh, you know, certainly learning as we go. Um, as I've stated, every time we talk, it's sort of hour by hour um, and ultimately day by day. But, you know, you think about, how quickly something like this can spread until it touches you, 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 you sometimes might not believe it. But you know, needless to say, we know this is very real and we know it moves quickly and it moves silently, but it can, it can infect a lot of people fast. Mo, in the contact tracing, where was the bottleneck then? Was it at the ballpark? Was it the travel? That, was it getting on the airplane? Where, where was this the, the event that may have I don't, led you? I don't, I don't think that question can be answered because you don't know how long the incubation is. No, like nobody knows like when someone began to spread. That's just not something we can answer. And I mean, look, we're, we're dealing with a, a traveling party of what, 57? And I can't do it. So can you imagine like the bigger question, like when people are dealing with like cities and, and states? So you, you, can, you can understand why this is such a daunting issue in, in our country and in our world. Oh, if, if, if things go well, you're going to have seven games that you have to make up in I think something like 53 days. 
Does, does that seem feasible to you given the personnel hits that you've taken to this stage? I haven't really even thought about our schedule much other than hopefully playing Friday. Um, it's, it's hard to think about the future when you're literally just trying to get through the day. Mo, you've tried to be pretty upbeat uh, about this. Obviously, this news isn't great. Just your feelings on where you guys are and whether you can keep moving forward beyond this? Well, I mean, we're going to do everything we can to try to play. Um, you know, I think the, the morale up here is, is, is good, all things considered. Um, you know, I do think people are tired of sitting in their room, but, you know, you got to put safety first. And, you know, ultimately, we, we've just got to wear it for the next couple of days, and, and hopefully we get the clearance to travel. Well, you no, have, uh, Mo, you had the four inconclusive tests when we talked to you on Saturday. Did all of those, are they included in these new positive totals? Did they all come back positive? Everything, everything I gave you is up to date. Mo, are all of the positive cases going back to St. Louis, or are they staying in Milwaukee for the time being? Uh, we have moved them all out of Milwaukee and back to their homes. Hey, Mo, you talk about flattening the curve, and the layman would say, well, you're up at 13 from four the other night. Can you just kind of take us through why the curve is flattening? Well, because a lot of these that, that, um, that we were talking about the other day, we, we mentioned there were some inconclusives, and now they've been um, verified. And so ultimately, when you look at where we were the last four days over that time period, We've only had one new case in the last 24 hours. So just to clarify, everybody who has tested positive has left Milwaukee. The rest of the team is all still in their hotel rooms in Milwaukee. Is that correct? That's that is I'm correct. Saying. We have no positive cases currently in Milwaukee. In the latest round of tests, were there any more that were inconclusive? No. Hey, Mo, Manfred told, uh, I think, the Associated Press this weekend that the Marlins have been able to determine where specifically they encountered the virus from. Is it safe to say, based off your answer today, that you guys do not have a direct answer on how this broke in at this point? I think we could guess, but we don't have it for sure. Mo, was there any delay in the turnaround time receiving results from the lab this weekend? You mentioned yesterday that you were expecting to be able to clarify some of those four inconclusives yesterday, and obviously we're here today. Did, did the lab turnaround time perform up to expectation? Yes, it did. Mo, you, that was not a concern. You, you pushed back the other night against this notion that, you know, some players have maybe been um, irresponsible or broken protocol. Do you still feel that way after a little, a couple more days of contact tracing that your guys, uh, that you don't have any concerns with what players did in the last few days? I do not. Hey, Bo, are you able to uh, comment on the status of the Field of Dreams game at this point? Uh, I have not heard anything on that game, no. Mo, who decides when you guys are cleared to travel? Is that a Major League Baseball edict? Is that a city edict? What, what's, what are the protocols there? Really, what you, what you need to have happen is, is two days of negatives, two sets of tests that are negative. Do you need three sets of tests to then return to play? Is that how that works? Um, I don't know how the return to play is. I was just told that, you know, once we could start traveling, we could go work out. Okay. And when you travel, how will you travel? Will it still be via plane to come back to St. Louis from Milwaukee then? It will be via plane, yes. No, I just want to make sure that I was clear with this. At the beginning, you said that there were five uh, asymptomatic and seven who had light symptoms. That eight. eighth player, does he have – so eight have lights, and nobody has a high-grade fever or anything that would concern you? Not at this time, no. So okay. it's, five, it's five and eight, for clarity. And, and of those eight, it's a variety of symptoms, but nothing that at this point is requiring anything like hospitalization. Mo, can you give us at all, I, I know I asked this earlier, I guess I asked it poorly. Can you give us a timeline on those symptoms? Did they start when you got to... Milwaukee, or are, they, are these new recurrences over the weekend? I would say all these symptoms came after they tested positive. 
Oh, okay. Thank you. Mo, this is this is what Mark was talking about, and it, we should put a fine point on it. There's a former Major League Baseball player, Jerry Hairston, who has been – I to put quotes around reporting, I guess, and it has been picked up that you, that there were players that went to a casino. Do you want to – do you have any – information on that do you do you know the background of that is there is that something that gets your attention i uh i have no factual reason to believe that is true um and i have not seen any proof of that if someone was at a casino though that would be disappointing Bo, well, does the fact that the Marlins appear to be getting some, you know, movement here and possibly resuming their season, does that give you a little bit of uh, more optimism that you can, in fact, resume and, and get it done? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty clear. Like, once you stop having people test positive, you can take that step forward. Now, it doesn't change the risk of what the season might look like. Um, but, you know, your hope is, is we can get back to baseball and, you know, everybody that's sitting up here right now, that's, that's their goal. Mo, that's a fourth of your active roster. What condition will your roster be in when you do return to play? It'll look a little different, but, um, you know, overall, I, I think we can withstand this. A lot of it's going to be, you know, how long does it take for someone to return? These are all unknowns. It's, you know, it's not like a sprained ankle where you might have an idea when someone's coming back. So, you know, every day I've always say we're, we're learning as we go, but um, as a reminder, our roster goes to 28 come Thursday when we play right. Friday. So, you know, inherently we're already going to be uh, down a couple people anyway. Is that's up for consideration though, right? Is, have they given you any indication they might change that though for this week? Maybe I have not heard that. As of now. Mo, has your camp at Springfield continued to operate as normal throughout this situation, or did your contract tracing require them to shut down as well? No, nope, they've been up and running. Will, will they continue to run? Uh, presumably, you're going to be bringing some of them into St. Louis if, if this all works out. Will, they, will you continue to have enough of a camp down there? Of course. Mo, you mentioned uh, morale is good. I, I know you are in contact with the players via text or what have you. Um, players are, are still focused on moving ahead with the season. You haven't heard anything different out of them? I have not heard anything different. I mean, obviously, you know, guys would love to find a way to get out of here, but protocols say we have to stay, and so everybody understands that. And well, then, as players return, is there a minimum quarantine time or is it simply the back-to-back the -back negative tests that they have to have to, to come back? I believe you have to be out seven days and then you have to have the, the um, two negatives. And then you also have to pass some cardio um, exam as well. Have there been discussions between you and Cubs officials about this upcoming series uh, to make sure that they're they feel safe uh, participating? I've had no conversations with them. I'm hopeful if we can show that we're medically clear that baseball will be played. Mo, given your comfort with how the guys have handled the social distancing and behaviors, as you mentioned, is there anything that can possibly be done to stringent up a little more and be even more careful, or is that just the nature of this virus? Well, that's sort of a Hard question to answer, right? I'm not an expert on the virus other than I know it's uh, infiltrated our clubhouse. But I, I, I think as, as a whole, I mean, public is struggling with how to best contain it. And when you think about baseball, it's, there's a lot of, 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 a lot of, of, of like, what's the right way to think about it? Like habits that, that are hard to break. Someone hits a home run, you give them a high five. I mean, like you, you're, you're trying to, to break these habits and, and, and change how we act during a game. And, and that is challenging. But I will say when we get back on the field, that's going to be a, a steadfast reminder that, you know, you got to stay away from each other. You've got to avoid trying to 
to cheer on your teammate as well with giving high fives or touching. It's, it's, these are just practices that have to become normal. And, you know, it's no different than any conversation we've had over Zoom. It's we have to recognize this is not normal and we have to adjust to the new norm. Mo, has any aspect of this caused you all to reconsider some of the procedures you've been undertaking and, and make changes to those moving forward? I just think we're going to fine tune them and, and, and make sure that, that we're adhering to them. Um, I mean, everybody's watched games, right? And it doesn't, it doesn't take long to say, oh, look at what's happening there. That's not following protocol. And so I think, you know, we can all try to do a better job of that and, you know, we as an organization will certainly try, um, but there's only so much you know people that sit in my seat can do. But you know we'll certainly uh, try to tighten those up as we move forward. Well, can you give us any kind of a breakdown about the the six staff members if they are on field personnel or support personnel? I, I'd prefer not to right now. Um, you know these guys have asked for privacy, and I'm going to give that to them. Well, we've asked you this before, but I, I feel the need to ask it again. Have you had any conversations with any players about opting out recently since we last talked to you? I have not, no. Mo, well, can you run us through the precautions and procedure of moving someone who is positive test from Milwaukee to their homes in St. Louis? Does that take a car service? Does that take non-stop how, how is that done safely yeah we had set up a, a rental car service where where the the car is is dropped off here the um player or staff member could jump into the car the car would then go right to their home and then the car would be towed and cleaned And they're asked not to stop along the way. Is that how that works then as well? I mean, because of the drive, I mean, it's short enough drive, right? Well, if they, if they had to stop, we asked that they, you know, wore face masks, um, gloves, and whatever reason they had to stop, do it quickly. Did you, did you guys come up with that procedure on the fly here? Or is that something Major League Baseball had previously set up? Or, I mean, no, that, that's something that, that we had talked about previously, if something like this were to happen. And so ultimately, when this did happen, that's the, the um, protocol we followed. Well, we've seen some injuries uh, from healthy non, non-virus related players creep up this season, just probably because of the oddity of the season and the, the timing of it. What's your concern level about these guys sitting in their hotel rooms for this amount of time and then getting maybe two practices in before, before play resumes. Well, it's a concern. Um, I'm not going to deny that, but, you know, hopefully everybody is staying in their rooms, you know, finding some way to do something, whether it's yoga, stretching, push-ups, sit-ups, you know, just moving their body. Um, but clearly having at least two days before we have to play a game was helpful. Mo, is it your expectation that you'll have to supplement any part of your staff with the folks who are currently at Springfield? I would imagine we're probably going to have to think through our staff at some point. Yes. So, I mean, is that, does that process work in roughly, obviously without the roster machinations, the same way that it would for a player? Obviously, everyone there who is operating as part of the camp is clear to testing, and so it's just a matter of physically moving without any other sort of hooves for MLB? That part is not tricky. What's tricky is then getting someone down there. Right, because you're going to have to go through the intake process. So we, we've begun a plan for that, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, all goes well over the next 48 hours, and we'll have a, a very seamless transition. So there haven't been any issues with the positive tests or anything in the Springfield camp among testing down there? No issues at Springfield. Mo, for, for much of July, when we had a chance to talk with you or your veteran players or Shilty, um, you put a lot of emphasis on the discipline you thought was possible with this team um, and the perimeter that could be built around it. Do you have to balance a sense of frustration with what has happened, with concern for health? And how do you do that, given I mean, there were obviously the team tried to take a lot of pride in in not being one of the teams that got caught in this 
Yeah, I, I think that's really the wrong way to look at it, frankly. It's not like, oh, we got caught and 28 others haven't. You know, in fairness, you're in a pandemic. And it's, it's almost impossible to say that, that we can build a dome around ourselves and move from city to city, move from really, you know, our home to the ballpark. Um, look, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, I've stopped to put gas in my car. I've, uh, my wife's called me and said, hey, can you grab something at the grocery store? Like, I mean, I've done that. And so I feel like, I feel like what you guys are asking for is something like I just can't give. And, and like, we understood there was going to be risk. And yeah, veteran players said, look, we got to protect each other. Um, Schulte has said it. I've said it. But I think that's just the inheritance risk of playing under a pandemic. It's, it's, you know, I guess would it feel better if, oh, someone was at a strip joint and that just made this answer easier? Um, Cause you don't go to a strip joint and you're not going to bring it in your house. But it's the point is anything can happen. And, you know, we tried to put, put things in place that would prevent this from happening, but it just shows you how challenging that is. Well, a few minutes ago, you mentioned the challenge of getting replacements through the intake process at Springfield. And that was regarding coaches, correct? Or did that, does correct. that also, does that also apply to potentially adding replacement players to the pool? It would. I mean, these are not like just simple, like pick up the call and, hey, Brian, meet me in Springfield tomorrow, because it's, it's roughly about a five-day period to get in. But you are considering potentially adding players as well as, as coaches? Um, I feel like from a player standpoint, we might be okay, but I'm going to have a roster meeting later tonight and sort of work through that. Thank you for clarifying. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you've had a lot of time to, to think here, probably more than you'd like, but have not your really. thoughts on <laughs> Well, maybe, sorry, I'm just assuming because you're locked in a room there, but just your thoughts on the integrity of the season as it stands. And we're asking a lot of questions that really seem surreal. Um, has your opinion on trying to, to play shifted? No, not really. I mean, like, everybody that has been playing deserves the right to continue to try to. And, you know, disappointed that, that we've lost games. Um, we know there's going to be some challenges to, to make them up, but I think that the double had a rule of seven inning games is helpful, but, you know, ultimately, uh, want to just get back on that field. I mean, that's what everybody here wants to do and, and, you know, take our chances, but, you know, it's, as I've always said, this is going to be complicated. There's going to be some daunting days. And, and right now we're, we're in a, a very trying time for this organization, but hopefully we get through it. Well, when they do the testing each day, does somebody come to everybody's room or do you have a room where everybody goes to take the tests or how is that procedurally done? For the most part, it is everybody has a slot, a time slot, and you go to a certain part of the hotel to do this. Um, but if you have someone that is pending or is tested positive and they're getting a secondary test, it's done in their room. And how about food? I mean, is the hotel providing food in the rooms for everybody, or how, how's everybody getting something to eat? Yeah, our, our performance department is, is handling the food orders, and, uh, yeah, there's a food schedule, and it's left outside your door. They knock, you open up your door, and voila, lunch. I find, I find it a lot of food, actually. I've been having to, like, skip a meal. Mo, the, the number we've heard associated with the folks in your traveling party is 58. Is that an accurate number? And does that represent a, a standard number? It wasn't ever any larger or smaller. Obviously, there's more players in this situation. Was, I think I said 58 the last time we spoke, and I recounted, and it was 57. Is that larger than would be a standard party during the regular season just because of the number of players? Or does that sound about right? Oh, no, that would be – it's way smaller. You don't have any uh, TV, radio personnel. Never been on a plane, have you, Jeff? Not your plane, no. Not coming soon either, big boy. Well, I'm not skipping any meals, so we're even. Even in what? Um, Mo, is the the exam the, the testing that you go through? 
Is that the MLB saliva exam or is it the rapid testing or both? We, we no, we're, we, we are currently um, exclusively doing the saliva at this point. Um, we did experience some of the rapid when we were experiencing a lot of the positives. But at this point, we're back to saliva. No, when this thing all broke and started on Friday, were you kind of prepared that this could happen? I mean, that this would be the kind of crust of what would happen, you know, be 13 total people? Or were you, I know you're optimistic and hopeful that that would just be limited to the two, but did you realistically, what did you expect? No, I imagine I was a bit naive. I think it grew a lot quicker than I thought. Um, and, you know, even I will say, like, once we started, like, digging on the contract tracing heavily, and and thoroughly where we ended up is not surprising me but i will say that's a bit hindsight so i don't want to act like oh i thought this was where it was headed um but it shows you really how quickly something like this can spread and, and it's you know, we're fortunate because we have the ability to literally test every day can you imagine like if you didn't and that's when you see what happens like in school or camps or office buildings and that's that's the, bigger challenge for, for society, but you know, for us, even, even with the tools we have at our disposal, it, it still can move. Mo, have you had any of the positive tests enter into the reentry phase where they've had, now had a negative? No, so once you're tested positive, um, mm -hmm. And, and you test positive twice, you're not tested again for seven days. Oh, okay, 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 yep, got it. So there's no shortcuts there. Well, am I excused? Mo, well, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I feel pretty good, actually. Um, trying to stay active in my little room here. Um, you know, do a few push-ups from time to time. And uh, as I said, I skip a meal, so I'm not just eating all the time. But um, overall, I feel fine. It's, it's, you know, it's, these are trying times. There's no, no way to get around that. And um, staying busy with, with A, trying to deal with all of this leading up to where we are today. And I, when I hang up with you guys, I, I am going to focus more on baseball for the next, um, a few hours and um, start thinking about what we might look like, like come Friday. Do you have some idea as to what the next, what you might do differently on the next road trip in the sense of not activities, but would you'll have more, will you have a, the compliance officer, the, the, the hat that you've wear, will you deputize somebody else for that? Do you have some ideas in mind for what the next road trip might look like as a result of this? Again, I don't think there's anything we could have done differently on the road. I'm, very confident that this originated in St. Louis and the timing of the test dictated it that we happen to be on the road. So okay. I don't know what we could do differently other than not put somebody that's infected on our plane. 